Last time in this seemingly endless project in Amelia, we were working on the interior as well as a few remnants on the exterior. But this time in this video, we're actually finishing this project. I never thought the day would come, but seriously, we're about to finish this. All right, let's move inside and let's get back to work. The first thing that we did on the interior was a little bit of cleaning up work on our walls, which included spackling, sanding, and painting. And with that, the walls were done. After installing the frame for our kitchen on the inside, it was time to fill in the rest. And this included the countertop, the stove, and the sink. With the stove in, it was time to run some propane lines from our propane tank on the other side of Amelia over to our stove. Because we had a new box made to store our propane tank, it was a completely blank slate. So we had to install the propane regulator, and once we did that, we actually realized that our old propane tank was no longer gonna fit in this space. When the new propane tank arrived, unfortunately, it actually had too much space in the new propane box. So we had to install some straps to keep it secured into the corner so it wouldn't roll around while we were driving. And after all of that, we finally had a working stove again. As a quick side note, it felt like a lot of our projects went this way. We would think it was gonna be a quick and easy fix. Slap a new propane tank in there, no problem. Nope, not a single one of the projects ever went that smoothly. We would always find that something was wrong that we didn't know was wrong. It would probably take eight hours and a couple of runs to Home Depot and West Marine, but in the end, we would always fight through it and get to the end. So if you're working on a project like this, just know it's not gonna go smoothly. If you think it's gonna take an hour, it's probably gonna take six hours. So clear your calendar, settle in, and let's finish this. With the stove squared away, we quickly moved on to the faucet. After installing our beautiful new countertops, it was really scary to drill a big fat hole right in the center. We installed our faucet and ran all of our plumbing lines despite the fact that it was extremely cramped back there. While running our water lines, we also installed a switch for the pump to monitor our fresh and gray water tanks. Now that the water and the propane was taken care of, it was time to actually build out the interior of our cabinets. We decided to go with drawers over cabinet door and shelves. And the reason being, we really wanted to have access to all of the space in the cabinet, including the stuff in the back. And the best way to do that is to access it with a drawer. Unfortunately, Going with drawers, we knew that we were gonna be taking on a little bit of extra weight because the sliders themselves for the drawers are kind of heavy. But for us, it was worth the weight. Get it. We constructed all of the drawers outside of Amelia and then brought them in to be installed onto their sliders and then into the cabinets. The drawer under the sink was specifically designed to house two small trash bins, which is where our trash and recycling would live. With the kitchen complete, we moved over to the driver's side of Amelia. We did much of the same where we constructed the frame for our cabinets outside of Amelia and then brought it in and reassembled it. After the cabinet was reassembled, we then brought in the countertop and the drawers. There was one drawer in particular that presented some unique challenges, and this is the drawer for our refrigerator. We wanted it to be on a slider because we wanted to be able to access it from the top and to access the beer that inevitably will be living in it. For this drawer, we picked up a 150 pound rated over travel slider. This way, it could hold the weight of the refrigerator and its contents with no problem. We decided not to put a face on this particular drawer so it was easy to access the refrigerator. While driving, we also needed to make sure that the drawer was not gonna come flying out around every corner. So we installed two deadbolts to hold the drawer into place while driving. Right above the refrigerator was going to be the home of all of our utensils. So we dove in deep and did a lot of organization and planning to decide where everything was gonna go. We put in little dividers to make sure everything had a home and stayed in its place while driving. In addition to silverware, this drawer is gonna hold plates, bowls, corkscrews, bottle openers, scissors, wine glasses, koozies, and essentially everything else other than pots and pans. After all the drawers were installed, we worked backwards and went back to work on the drawer faces. The reason being is we wanted to make sure that we knew the exact measurements of how much space that we had for our drawer facades because we wanted everything to be nice, even, and well-spaced. And the finishing touch on the drawers was adding cork to the bottom to prevent any possible rattling and to protect anything that was living inside of them. Then we had all of our curtains made by a seamstress who lives down the street. Once they were completed, I hand painted each and every one of them because I wanted them to each have their own personality. It was honestly a labor of love because each one had to be completely masked off before any paint could be applied. 
but I think that we can all agree it was worth the time and the effort because let's be honest, the curtains look amazing. With weight at a premium in Amelia, we only like to carry a few books, maps, and guidebooks with us. To keep those with us, we wanted to build a small bookshelf in some open areas that we had in Amelia. We used scrap pieces of Peruvian walnut, the wood that we used to make the countertops, two above the back window and one on the driver's side countertop. Using more scraps of the walnut, we also constructed a USB box to house four USB plugs with an on-off switch on the driver's side countertop. It was also located close to the bed so we could charge our phones at night. As one of our finishing touches, we installed a thin piece of metal onto our sliding door going into the cab. We did this so we could use magnets to display our collection of Polaroids that we've taken from the road. Adding small finishing touches like this around Amelia is some of our favorite stuff to do because it's all of these small fine details that turn a truck into a home. And just like that, Amelia's done. But we do have one more video for you guys lined up and Owen's gonna be taking you through our electrical system. It's all a bunch of mumbo jumbo that I don't understand, but he gets really stoked about. So you have that to look forward to. But hold tight, right after that, we'll have the final tour of Amelia. Get excited, because she's beautiful.